There is not much to say about these two because the story is short. Larson and Pierre are two mercenaries who are after the same artifact as Lara. Obviously, it is Lara who manages to obtain the artifact. Larson and Pierre reappear later in the story, being hired by Natla, who is another villain. Pierre eats the smart one and Larson eats the dumb one. Their encounters with Lara were more funnier than threatening, which is why I decided to put them in the last place. I like them as characters, but as the main enemy I don't think it works that well. His original name is Amaru and he was the youngest prince of Paititi, a hidden city. He eventually approached the Kulkun Cairn cult, which was a way for Trinity to control the city. The leader of the organization liked him and gave him the opportunity to graduate in archaeology and later become a leader of Trinity. Until Paititi went through a wave of starvation and his brother, now king, left town to find a solution but died. His wife took the leadership and began to protest against the violent influence of the Ku Ku Khan cult. So Dominguez took advantage to become high priest of the cult and removes his sister-in-law from the position of power. The villain begins his search for two artifacts that were supposed to save his city. During this search he met Laura's father and they became friends, but upon discovering that Laura's father was studying and looking for Patiti, refusing to stop his research, Dominguez sends Hannah, another member of Trinity, to seduce and convince him to stop. And when that doesn't work, he ends up sending someone else to kill him. Lara gets the first artifact before the villain and accidentally begins the apocalypse. But short after, he manages to recover the artifact from Lara. But short after, Dominguez manages to recover the artifact from Lara and right away began searching for the other artifact that would stop the apocalypse and let tame its power to save the city. Once again, Laro gets the second artifact before him, but he finds a way to take it from her. With the two artifacts, he begins to start the ritual of the sun. With the help of the creators and the protectors of the artifacts, Lara is able to reach the ritual site and kill Dominguez before he can finish the ritual. I don't like him as a villain because I don't think he's really that bad. I was hoping that Trinity leader would be much more intimidating and cruel. I was also not able to feel sorry for his story because half of the things I don't see happening, we are just told they happened and it's not the same thing. Hannah is Lara's stepmother and is part of an organization called Trinity. She managed to steal the heart of Lara's father and spy on him for a while until Trinity orders her to kill her husband, but she had fallen in love and was unable to kill him. So another person in the organization killed him. Even after that, Anna continued to work for Trinity in the hopes of finding a cure for a disease that was slowly killing her. Laura continues her father's research on the Divine Source and knowing this takes the opportunity to follow Lara's footsteps to find the artifact that would save her and give her internal life. Anna tries to trick Lara by playing the victim to pressure Lara to reveal the location of the divine source. But when she sees that Lara doesn't really know, she reveals to be working for Trinity and offers Lara the opportunity to join them. Lara refuses and Constantine prepares to kill her, but Anna stops him showing that she still cares about Lara. In the end, Anna manages to use the divine source but something goes wrong and Lara is able to destroy the artifact. The two live together but Anna ends up being 
murdered by a Trinity sniper while Lara was confronting her about her dead death. Now, Constantine is Anna's brother who stabbed his hand while he was sleeping to simulate stigmata. The wounds never healed and he felt that he had been chosen to do great things, thus increasing his faith and determination. Later, Constantine becomes commander in Trinity and believes faithful in the organization's goals of creating a world without sin and pain and also believes that he will be able to heal his sister. Through the game, the villain does everything to get the divine source, having no pity for anyone but his sister, who was not so faithful to Trinity and sometimes would manipulate him. In the end, he fights Lara, there is an option to kill him or to leave him behind but he also ends up dying anyway. I don't like them as villains because they were very poorly developed, despite the base of the story being interesting. Maybe I will make another video about what I would change in their story. In 1982, a plane crashes on Yamatai Island, and one of the survivors was Matthias. They try to leave the island, but another storm prevents them killing and injuring several people. The survivors expected Matthias to come up with a plan. He told them to try again, escaping, knowing it, it would be pure suicide, as he believed they were weak and stupid. The villain knew that something was not right with the island and decided to investigate. He discovers the story of the Sun Queen Imiko, who was trapped in a decaying body and has to be transferred to a new body that would be worthy, through a ritual. Matthias believed that by helping her she would stop the storms. Over time, Matthias creates an organized group with the name of Solari that worships the goddess. One time Matthias hears Imiko's whispers in his sleep, telling him that the Chosen One was about to reach the island. The Chosen Vessel is Sam, Laura's best friend. When their group suffers a shipwreck, ending up in the island, Matthias kidnaps her twice. He tries to set Sam on fire, but a mysterious wind extinguishes it, being seen as a sign of Imiko that she was the chosen one. In the end, Matthias starts the ritual, but Laura manages to interrupt it. The two fight and she kills him and saves Sam. Matthias is an okay villain, he is very evil and doesn't care about anybody but himself and his speeches bore me to death. Sergei is the leader of the Russian Mafia. He wants to take over the world and for that he wants to obtain the Spear of Destiny, which is at the bottom of the sea after the ship that carried it was sunk during the Second World War. Sergei bribes Admiral Igor to use his submarine to accomplish his goal. Already under the sea, Igor finds Lara in the submarine and locks her in a room. Upon hearing about the intruder, Sergi gets furious because Igor didn't kill her and then he decides to do it himself. Lara escapes from the room and manages to collect the artifact with the help of the deep sea diving suit. When returning to the submarine, Lara is forced to give the artifact to Sergi who was waiting for her. When the Spear of Destiny came to his hands, a strange power emerged from the artifact, killing him and damaging the submarine. I'm not sure why Serge is in this place, maybe because he looks scary and I like his accent. He also tries to kill Lara the first and only time he sees her. It's a pity that his story is short. Set is the Egyptian god of chaos. He killed his brother Osiris and started a fight with his nephew Horus to despite Osiris' place. The other gods decided that Horus would rule the world of the living and Seth was trapped in a coffin through the amulet 
of Horus as punishment. A few centuries later, Lara accidentally releases him. Upon realizing what she had done, she searched for various pieces of Horus armor, with the objective of summoning him to stop Seth. The villain decides to possess von Croy to command his mercenaries. With their help, he got the ceremonial tablet and tries to convince Lara to give him the amulet of Horus in exchange for immortality and power, but she refuses and runs away. In the temple of Horus, while Lara is putting on the Horus armor in the right places, Set appears in his god form and destroys the armor. So Lara misses the only opportunity to defeat him. She retrieves the amulet of Horus from the water, climbs the pyramid, while avoiding Set's attacks. Upon reaching the top, she traps Set using the amulet of Horus to close a door for all eternity. Set has cool powers like immortality, flying, green rays, possessing people, and he also looks and sounds very creepy in Werner's body. But through the game, he doesn't do much until the end. Marco Bartoli looks like an Italian mobster. He is the leader of the organization Fiamma Nera, that means Black Flame in English, who has been looking for the Dagger of Sion for centuries. Because they venerate the powers of the artifact that, by stabbing the dagger in your heart, you will transform into a dragon and control an army of warriors. The villain is continued the mission, his father failed, dying in a bombardment against his ship Maria Doria, leaving an important artifact in the depths of the ocean called the Seraph that would help them finding the Italian artifact. Marco finds out the location of his father's ship, but Lara obtains the Seraph first. The next artifact is the Italian. A monk who was being tortured by the organization reveals only to Lara where the Italian is, but Marco was hiding and heard everything. He kills the monk and tries to kill Lara. Once again, Lara manages to catch the Italian before Marco, using the Seraph to open the door. Now with the Italian, Lara enters the Emperor's Palace in China, where the Dagger of Xi'an is. When Lara finds him again, he turns into a dragon and fights against Lara that removes the dagger from his heart, killing him that way. He is high in this list because he has an interesting story and transforms into a dragon, so that's actually very cool. Mark Williard is a Scottish scientist who is part of an excavation company. During an excavation in Antarctica, Mark and the team find traces of a meteorite and later the location where a navigator died and left his diary. Reading this diary, he discovers that the navigator and his crew had found four artifacts made from the meteorite stone that had very interesting properties. Therefore, he sent three men to the temple in India to get one of the artifacts. Two of them died, the survivor got the artifact but was killed by Lara, who was also in interested in the artifact and was looking for it. Mark Williard happens to meet Lara and seeing that she has the Infada Stone artifact, he decides to tell her what he knows and tells her that there are three more artifacts and that he wanted to hire her to find them. Meanwhile, during other excavations, the team members began to mutate and turn into monsters, as they were exposed to the meteorite material. Mark, instead of being horrified, found it fascinating and that it would be a way to more quickly evolve the human species. When Lara returns to deliver the artifact, she comments that she has found a mutant colleague of his. Mark then starts talking about his plans to use the artifacts to evolve humans more quickly. Laura does not like the idea 
and tries to kill him, but he manages to escape, fleeing with the artifacts to the crater, where he would use the artifacts. Williard places the artifacts in their respective locations in the crater, and from the center a meteorite appears. Mark throws himself into the hole and returns a few seconds later as a mutant. During the fight, Lara collects the artifacts and kills Williard. I liked how Mark seemed a normal person at the beginning, but starts with crazy ideas in the end. The typical crazy scientist. His boss fight is actually really hard also. Amanda was one of Lara's best friends at university and loved to study religions and myths. A few years ago, the two went to Peru with a few more friends from university and Amanda's father, excavating a tomb. Inside, a mysterious creature starts killing them. Larry and Amanda, the last survivors, end up being cornered by the creature. Amanda decides to remove a stone from the wall, making the creature disappear. However, the tomb begins to collapse and Amanda is trapped in the falling ceiling and Laura thinks that she had died at that moment. But no, Amanda managed to get out of the tomb with the creature's help because the stone on the wall controlled it. Years later, the friends meet again in search of Excalibur to find Avalon. Laura is happy to see her friend alive but Amanda was resentful that Lara didn't try to get her out of the tomb, and so they become enemies. In the end, Lara kills her boyfriend, and it turns out that Amanda was indirectly responsible for the death of Lara's mother, who hurt her in the past, and by following her orders, she disappears. In Tomb Raider Underworld, Amanda continues with the same motivations. It turns out that she has Natla as a prisoner to give her information. In the end, Amanda teams up with Lara to stop Natla and leave Avalon. After all that, Amanda still refuses to be Lara's friend again. Amanda, sometimes it's annoying, but she was close to Lara, they had a connection, which makes things more interesting, and you are always wondering if they are going to be friends again. Fighting against your best friend that you thought that was dead, it's harsh. Also, Amanda is able to use the monster and his powers, which is awesome. Vladimir is a demoniac undead horseman, a uh, abbot promise him eternal life and deceive him by trapping him in a barn surrounded by running water, as demons cannot cross it. 700 years later, Lara and father Patrick go to the island to investigate. Lara alone sees her path blocked it by Vladimir, I have no idea why he doesn't kill her there. She later returns with a piece of shock and begins to draw a warding spell, but Vladimir interrupts her and does not kill her because Father Patrick saves her, but ends up being kidnapped by the demon. When Lara arrives at the barn, she finds Vladimir again, who says to spare the priest's life if she stops the waters. Lara frees the demon, who spares the priest, but decides to kill her. Father Patrick tells Lara to read the names of the bestiary she encountered during her adventure. Lara starts saying the names and at the last moment says Vladimir's demoniac name, which is Verdilet. By seeing his name, she gained full control over him and orders him to go away. I loved Vladimir because he looked and was scary. I also like his story and would love to know more details. He looks cool in that horse and it's treacherous. He is unique because it's rare to have supernatural villains. As a demon he doesn't have empathy which makes him more dangerous because his actions will always be unexpected, like not killing the priest but trying to kill Laura. 
Eckhart is an immortal alchemist from the 15th century who created an artifact called the Sun Glyph, which he divided into five parts and hid them in paintings with evil images called the Obscura Paintings. Later, he created an organization by the name of Cabal, which was made of more alchemists like him. To dominate the world, he wanted to revive the Nephilim race, which he believed would help him achieve his goals. After some years, the villain killed the members of the Cabal to keep their secrets safe, but the Lux Veritatis, which were a Christian order, managed to paralyze Eckhart using the period shards that were used to kill Nephilines and imprisoned him in a pit near their headquarters for all eternity. In 1945, his prison was bombed and he escapes. Eckhart returned to form the Cabal with new members and began to kill all the Lux Veritatis and start to look for the five Obscura paintings and the Period Shards. The Cabal got three Obscura paintings and the Period Shard. Eckhart hires Werner, Lara's former mentor, to locate the last two Obscura paintings. Werner discovers the location of one Obscura painting and discovers Eckhart's plans. He betrayed him by transmitting information to a Lux Veritatis member. The villain realizes the betrayal and supposedly kills them both. The moment before killing Werner, he tells him that the tomb was too dangerous but that Lara would be able to get it out of there. So Eckhart spares Lara by leaving her unconscious. When Eckhart killed his victims, he removed their organs to use them in the body of a Nephilim he found in Turkey, called the Sleeper. Almost at the end of the game, Lara had in her possession the two Obscura paintings, which she had to give to Eckhart, who threatened to kill Curtis, the last member of the Lux Veritatis, who was also trying to stop him. Curtis gives Lara the remaining period charts, in the end, Eckhart starts using the Sun Glyph and the Obscura paintings to revive the Sleeper. Lara interrupts him and they start to fight. When Lara gets ready to use the last Periat shard, Karel stops her and he himself stabs Eckhart, who is once again paralyzed. Karel is the last Nephilim alive, but we only know that in the end. Through the story, we think that he is just another member of the Cabal. In fact, he was discreetly manipulating Eckhart and convinced him that he was also an alchemist and that to take over the world, he would need the help of the Nephilim. Corel has the ability to shapeshift, so it's hard to know when it's Eckhart or Corel. An interesting thing is that in the scene where Lara gives the Obscura paintings in exchange for Curtis, all the members of the Cabal are there except Carol. At the end of the game we know that he was the one who killed Werner. He also says at the end, after killing Eckhart, who he no longer needed, that he had also been impersonating other people to help Lara during her search. In other words, he also manipulated her and offers her uh, the opportunity to be part of the new world order. Lara refuses and Corel starts to fly and attacks her with green rays. Lara manages to grab the foot of the sleeper and use the sun glyph to destroy the sleeper and supposedly Corel too. But the truth is that he didn't die and was going to appear in the sequel. Both characters had very interesting stories and were kinda mysterious. I would love to know why Corel was the only Nephilim escaping Beth. While Hecart, it's that type of villain that you never know who he's going to kill next and why. His voice also makes him even cooler. And both villains' powers were also very interesting. In first place we have Natla, a cruel, manipulative and charismatic character. Her appearance varied widely in all games. In Tomb Raider Anniversary she looks a bit frightening and even has her Atlantean form, 
which is interesting. She is able to fly and shoot fire projectiles and in anniversary she can also teleport and switch between human and Atlantean forms. Laura never managed to kill Natla because she's immortal and because of all this Natla deserves first place. Natla is an Atlantean who rule Atlantis with Qualopec and Teokan using a powerful artifact called the Skion, which was shared by the three leaders. Everything was going well until Natla started to abuse the Skion's power to create a new superior species of Atlanteans. When Teokan and Qualopec found out, they decided to imprison her for eternity. Years later, the United States began testing nuclear weapons in Mexico near Natla's prison. One of the explosions eventually released her. Now free, Natla founded a technologies company and began her search for the three pieces of the Skion and the Great Pyramid. All other Atlanteans were dead, which was perfect for her to continue with her plans. Natla discovers the location of Qualopec's tomb where it is a skin piece and decides to convince Lara to go and get it. When Lara gets all the skin pieces, Natla steals the skion and tries to kill her, but Lara runs away. Now with the skion completed, Lara goes to an island where she found the Great Pyramid necessary for the creation of the new species and the 17th age. But as expected, Lara followed her and destroyed the Skion and the Pyramid. Is it thought that Natla dies at the end of anniversary, but she returns to appear in Tomb Raider Underworld as Amanda's prisoner? Natla told her that to get into Avalon she would need Thor's gloves, belt and hammer. Later Natla says the same thing to Lara. After collecting all the artifacts, Lara releases Natla from her prison as she states that Lara will need her to perform a ritual to open Avalon's entrance and also tells her where it is. Lara meets Natla and the two open the the entrance to Avalon. Inside, Lara finds a zombie version of her mother and Natla has fun with the scene, confesses how she manipulated Lara and her father, who she killed when he betrayed her. Natla, through a mechanism, tries to start a 17 age, as she tried before, but again Lara stops her. In an exclusive DLC for Xbox, we discover once again that Natla had not died. She was just very weak. In the end, the doppelganger, who got her freedom thanks to Lara, refuses to help Natla and lets her stuck in the wreck rage. What did you think of this top? What are your favorite villains and the ones that you don't like that much? Don't forget to like, to share and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Until next time, bye bye!